Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, a quick update to our last video. We're just going to be rebuilding the same file taxes operator, but this time uh, just in tops. So I'm going to go through things a little bit faster because I went through a lot of the concepts behind this in the last video. But I wanted to have this as both a comparison so you can see kind of the difference between a GLSL and top workflow and also uh, for those who might feel a little bit intimidated by doing some of the GLSL coding. Um, I think this is a pretty cool effect and it's really easy to do in tops as well so I thought it would be a good uh, addition. So this is kind of where we left off last, left off last time and I'm going to basically just copy and paste this, jump in here, and um, I'm not going to delete everything, I'm just going to kind of replace this section right here with our calculation in tops, and that's going to help, uh, and then we'll be able to just kind of keep everything else the same. So the first thing that we need is a pattern. That pattern is going to be a ramp. And we'll make sure that its length is our number of points and its amplitude will also be our number of points. We use a chopped top to convert that and make sure that it's a 32-bit float uh, mono. And on the viewer to confirm there, we're going from zero to a thousand, so that's exactly what we want. And at this point, um, we have, which you probably remember if you saw the last video, uh, we have this phylotaxis function. And this is basically going to be the function that we are going to be kind of re-implementing here. So I'm going to just grab this section of the code put it in this tech stat so we can have it kind of in front of us while we're working. And uh, yeah, so from here, we're just gonna try and build this using tops. So, uh, thankfully, we can actually just ignore this center uh, because it is set to zero and then we just add, so there's really no effect at all, which simplifies our code a little bit. Um, so the first thing we have to do is calculate this R. R is going to be spread times the square root of n. Uh, so we'll do the spread term in a second, but first we'll do the square root of n. Uh, so I'm gonna make a null here, and we'll call this small n. And then uh, we can use a function top uh, to square root that. And then I like to keep the names pretty good here uh, when we're working with tops to do a lot of arithmetic like this. So we'll call that square root of n. Uh, and then we'll have a multiply. And then we'll have another null and we'll call that r. So we'll call multiply by spread. Like I said, we'll come back to that. We're trying to bypass it for now. Uh, so now, the next thing we need to do is figure out what our angle is going to be. Um, so we can do that by using a parameter. And we can grab the angle parameter. Then uh, we can use a expression. And in the expression, multiply our input value by math.pi and then divide by 180 and that's going to be a two radians operation so this is kind of going to be our phi right here so we'll drop down the null and we'll call that phi and then we're going to get to our theta which is going to be our phi times n and so to do that a math top so that we stay in top land and actually just multiply by our phi in the math top and then this is going to be theta which is our phi times n 
So now we need to create the two component vector that will be our xy positions, and that's going to involve taking r, multiplying it by a cosine and sine of theta respectively. So the first thing we can do is get our sine of theta and cosine of theta. So we'll use two functions for this. I'll call one cosine theta, and we'll call the other one sine theta. Uh, for cosine theta, uh, we'll make sure that our input function uh, is going to be cosine, and we'll make sure that it's in radians. And then for sine, uh, we'll choose sine, and also make sure that it's in radians. Now both of these we will oops, multiply, and we're going to multiply those by our R texture, which is here. And so then we can call this R cosine theta. I think we should probably well first we can use a reorder and we will make sure this reorder is going to be a 32 bit float RGBA input one red input two red input three red uh, and then what is our input three that's our Z coordinate which is just our n times 0 0.5. Um, and so we can grab our n, and then we can just do a math. Not a Luma level. A math, and just multiply it by 0 0.5. vector which we can put right into our oops position texture okay there we go so now I'm going to just copy and paste this null I'm going to get rid of all these render selects because we don't actually want them anymore uh, I'm going to call one of these rotation I'm going to call one of them scale and I'm going to call the other one now, obviously, we won't actually be using these for all of them. And this, we can actually, I think, just, well, we might want it for a second. Bypass. And, uh, okay, so, now we're kind of getting there. I'm going to get a constant. And I'm going to make sure that constant has my number of points on the X and just one on the Y. Make sure it's a 32 bit float. And this one is gonna be my color. Okay, great. Um, so in our shader for scale, we have size one plus N over N over 10. And so for that, well, I guess first we want to kind of make sure that these are positioned a little bit more nicely. Right now they're kind of have these artifacts where these lines are all straight. Um, one thing that we probably want to do is use a limit top and quantize these values to integers, which you'll see is now clearing up our positioning. Now to get the scale, uh, we will take our n, we'll do another math. In this case, we're going to take our number of points, and we'll just do 1 over. And so this will be n over big N. And then we can do a post add one. And remember this was number of points over 10 actually in our 
shader. And then this will be our scale. And then we'll make sure that we take the scale R values. And then we have some nice scaling. Although our value going from 1 to 11 doesn't look something like over five. Yeah, that could be good. Um, okay, and then uh, one other thing we need to do now is the spread, which I said we come back to. So spread, how do we calculate that? In our shader, oops. in our shader, we're calculating the spread by using uh, this mapping function to take our Florit ID and map it from the range uh, 0 to the number of florets to the range 0 0.5 to our uniform spread. So we can actually do that really easily here. We can take uh, this value again, which is going to be our n, and then we can use a math, and we can use this range, range, we can rearrange from 0 to the number of units, 2.5 to our spread vector. And then uh, we can just unbypass this and multiply by our spread. And now we have our florets more nicely packed in the center uh, like we had before. And then maybe we want to change this back to over 10 like we had originally. And that's starting to look almost exactly like before. Uh, one other thing that we need to add, though, is the palette coloring. So I'm going to get rid of the shader now. We don't need it anymore. And here we can also select this. Uh... Actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this N over N here. And we're going to just remove this so that it is uh, 1 divided by our number of points and remove the post add so that we just have a zero to one. And then we can actually use a lookup. We can look up this texture using our zero to one, oops, maybe like this, no, like this, and make sure to use the, uh, do, 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 red, no. Right. There we go. And then we'll just use a custom resolution and again use the number of points X and Y. And so now we have this lookup kind of being associated. I mean, I guess actually we could probably also just literally fit this into the same range. And maybe that works. Doesn't look quite as nice though. Oh wait, because we want it to actually be based on the radial um, location of their florets. In any case, now we have the color in there. And uh, so now we just need to add the zootropic animation. And to do that, we can use a point transform. It's actually super easy. And then we'll just use this rotate Z. Uh, we can rotate using this speed that we have from before. The only thing I'm gonna do now is just actually go in and add the times phi here in chops uh, just because it's a little bit easier and then I'll drag and drop this onto our rotate Z. It's now going inward so we can just make that a negative and then it's going to be going outward. And so 
there we have it. Uh, basically, you just rebuilt the whole Phylotaxis algorithm in TOPS, and it was pretty easy, pretty fast, and now it's also maybe a good example of how you can kind of think about porting algorithms from one domain in Topland to GLSL and back. In many cases, without any loss of functionality, it might just be a little bit easier or faster to do one way uh, rather than another. So I will stop here for today. Thank you again for all of your support, and until next time, goodbye.